Sisters Patsy and Peggy sit in the same row as they did 56 years ago for the Elvis concert in Tyler. It was a great show, third row from the front. We screamed our heads off. Yeah, great. Today, tribute artist James Wages is on that same stage. Back then, getting money for the show wasn't that easy. Well, it cost a dollar. When we asked our dad, he said, no way. That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. And he wouldn't give us a dollar. But we came up with a better plan. We went to a, a used clothing store and we sold our winter coats for a dollar each. And so we had enough money to pay for our ticket to come in. East Texas disc jockey Tom Perriman promoted Elvis. The Louisiana Hayride was quite popular in the, from 48 to 58. And I began booking that talent off of the Hayride during the week. Elvis first played Tyler in January of 1955 to a small crowd. When he came back in August, his music was more popular. What was it like here that night? We didn't scream as loud as some of our friends did. We had some real screamers in the bunch, but it was exciting to see him and he was so cute. By the time he got to the front, he had hit that I got a woman and they went absolutely hog wild. Besides the Mayfair building here in Tyler, Elvis played all over East Texas in the 1950s. And we would work every night, somewhere. Schoolhouses, rodeo arenas, ballparks. Tom's wife, Billy, cooked for Elvis. I made banana pudding in a big crock. That was his downfall. This is, he loved to eat. The first time Elvis came to East Texas, he was broke. Tom booked him in Gladewater at the Mint Club. And I gave him all of the $90, and they never forgot it. He asked me to quit my job and go on the road with him and manage him on the road. I said, Elvis, boy, I appreciate that, but man, I can't do that. Man, there's some weeks here in Gladewater, I'll make over $100 a week. <laughs> a few months after his last Tyler concert, Elvis signed with RCA Records. Elvis was a phenomenon. I don't think it'll ever happen again. For CBS 19, I'm Sheriff J.B. Smith, and that's my story.